Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host Larry, and today we're going to learn how to set up the Game Capture HD software, which is the software you're going to need to use your fancy new Elgato capture card, either the original Elgato capture card, the HD60 capture card, or the fancy new like actual card that physically goes inside of your computer. And this is going to be the one where we talk about how to do it on the Mac. Uh, they're not too different, so you can watch this for the PC, but there will be a couple slight differences, so I will do a version of this specifically for the PC. Um, currently, I'm actually looking at my laptop in this window, so um, yeah, you can use this to record like game consoles like the PS4 or the Xbox One, or the, you know, the Xbox 360, PS3, and you can also use it to record like mobile devices like the iPad, iPhone, Android phones, Android tablets, uh, Google TV, the Chromecast, all sorts of things. If it's got an HDMI signal, you can capture it with this uh, software, provided it is not encrypted. And that's something that I will cover in a different video. Isn't that just fancy? So. Once you've gotten the download for this software, it's in the description. Uh, just to make sure it's installed and open that puppet dog up and we will get started by, well, going up to the top of the window in the upper right hand corner and just going over all the different settings. We'll talk about how to record and how to stream with this stuff and how to set up stream command. So we'll keep you covered. Uh, the only thing we won't go over is this editing tab here at the top which I have a separate video already made that you can go check out on how to use the built-in editor to create your fancy stuffs and uh, publish them to YouTube or just export them. So the first thing I should note here is that there are two primary sets of settings for the Game Capture HD software. There's this first little gear up here directly under the Game Capture HD logo. This controls where all of your videos are saved, and some of the simpler uh, settings for the software itself. The other setting down here controls your capture card a little bit separately. So right here, I just left my videos here under my default movies folder in the Game Capture HD library, but you could set this little change button, and I could change this to put it just about anywhere. I could put it in my downloads folder, I could put it in my Chupacabra folder, I... You, c you can't save them to a CD, but you could save them, you know, other computers on your network if you had a fast enough network. Anywhere in here is fine, and then it'll send all of that stuff there, and you can even just click on this to open it up, either on the Mac or on the PC, in case you forget where it's kept, and you want to go back and double check that everything is there. And then down here, we've got record live commentary in a separate audio track. Now, for my purposes in audio, as you can see here behind my game capture, I run all of my audio through Adobe Audition, and that makes it all fancy and clean, and it removes a lot of things like the breathing noises that are oh so annoying. And that just makes my life a whole heck of a lot easier. If you're not going to edit your audio separately, then I would suggest turning this off or leaving it turned off. But if you do want to use that, I'll show you. It'll give you um, three files. It'll give you the primary video file for whatever you were um, recording. This is Fallout. It'll give you the audio from the game itself in a separate file. And then it'll give you your commentary. And all of these will be able to be imported into any video editor of your choice. So no worries there. So that's what this does if you want to use this. If you have the ability to edit your audio, I certainly recommend this. It just makes your life a whole heck of a lot easier. Now down here, enable flashback recording. So down here, um, underneath this little dial here and this little sort of timeline over here is called the flashback recording buffer. As Elgato sits on, the game capture um, software sits on, it will continue to record stuff in the background, even if you don't have the capture button turned on. This is so that if something happens when you don't intend to record, 
you can pull back this little time switch back here, and then you can press the record button, and it'll record from this point forward in the flashback sort of buffer file, and then continue recording until you turn it off. So if I go all the way back in time, you can see that I was updating my Tomb Raider install, and I maybe don't want to save that footage, but right as Infinity Trap is updating, I can record from there forward, and then I've saved that as a regular video file to use later. So it's a really good idea to have flashback recording turned on, and if you're on the Mac, sometimes your recordings can get a little bit janked up if you disable this feature. I'm not sure why that happens, it doesn't happen a lot, but I just leave that enabled, even though I don't use the flashback recording buffer all that much, just in case. So next thing, you've got the ability, if you want to buy one of these, you can use a foot toggle switch that you, like, keep across the room on a really long cable next to your, like, whatever couch or chair you sit in for recording consoles. You can set it up so you use a toggle switch to, uh, you know, start, stop recording, and then you enable that by clicking on this button. Um, I don't have one of those, I frankly don't know anyone who does, but if you do have one of those, then you can use that right here. And then, before we talk about stream command, this is the functions that let you put, like, your webcam and your picture into your stream and stuff, uh, we'll go down here and we'll say that, like, yes, I'd like to export videos for the, um, Apple TV export as 1080p, why the heck not? And if you don't want to hear your commentary in some of your exported videos because you want to do something else with them, you can mute your commentary that's exported via the edit tool over here that can be muted whenever you export it from the editor. I don't really know anyone who wants to use that, so I leave that unchecked. And then down here, it's always a good idea to keep your software up to date in case of shenanigans. And so we'll enable stream command, and we will talk about these bars that just appeared on the bottom of the window in a moment. But basically, these allow you to control things like webcams, putting stuff into fancy overlays, etc., etc., whatever you feel like adding to your window, so that it's uh, all as spectacular and delicious as you want it to be. So before we get into that stuff, let's jump into the next set of settings for the capture card. Now, once you've got your capture card plugged into the system, it will appear up here in this window. If I switched out to my older capture card to the regular Game Capture HD, it would ch this image would change, and it would say just 1080p in this little area right here. But you can, to manage these settings, you can just click on this little sort of hammer and wrench right here, which controls the device settings for your Elgato, and it's all right in here to control like your quality, to control the input type, what sort of device you're recording from, all of that stuff is right here in this little settings button underneath of device. So I've currently got an Elgato Game Capture HD60 set to take in 1920 by 1080 footage at 60 FPS, and it's going to output 19 by 20 footage, or 1920 by 1080 footage at 60 FPS progressive, and it's going to save that at 25.3 megabits per second. And that stands for bitrate. So whenever you record a video, your bitrate basically controls how big your file is, and the bigger the bitrate, the more quality that it can capture from whatever you're recording from, whether it be your console or your computer or whatever, and uh, I tend to recommend no higher than 35 uh, megabits per second, just because a lot of computers don't really output better than that. So there's really no point in saving bigger files because you're not getting any better quality out of them. But I mean, just to keep in mind that YouTube is going to compress the pants off of whatever videos you create, so don't worry about making them excessively humongous. But there's not a lot of feedback in the system um, in these different t tiles and toggles and, you know, little pull switches here. There's not a lot of feedback in what the settings are, so when you're not sure what happened, just look back up here, and that'll tell you what settings you're currently using. So, the first thing we'll talk about is what on earth are these input devices, Larry? Well, these input devices are important to, to tell the software what you're recording from, because if I'm, say, recording an iPad, iPads are very square, 
So there's nothing on this side of my screen or this side of my screen. So it's really nice if the Elgato doesn't try to record anything that's not actually there. So let's say I'm recording an iPad. I can set it to crop the footage using the lightning connector or the dock connector. Um, whichever version of the iPad you use, just make sure you select the correct uh, little plug that it uses, and it does matter. Um, that will automatically trim off the edges of my video so that it's not recording like blank space that doesn't need to be there, and it's easier to edit later so that you only capture what would then be the iPad footage. If you record, say, a PlayStation 4, you'd select PlayStation 4, and that would go back up to the full 1080p 16 by 9 aspect ratio, but I use a non-supported thing, which is a PC. So I record a PC, so I just set the input device to none, and then I just don't crop it, and I don't use any of these other settings. Like, you can convert standard definition input from older consoles, like SNES or things like that, if you're recording via the older Elgato capture card, which is designed to capture retro consoles. Um, if you're using one of those, those things output standard definition footage for smaller televisions. You'd want to convert those to like 640 by 480 p because it's a little bit easier for the encoding to do its job and record your videos. And then if it's a standard definition footage, you can just click this to stretch it so that it fits your recording panel and you don't have to edit it after the fact. But I'm not doing that, so I'm not going to worry about that too, too much. Um, your input device should just be HDMI. If it's not, you'll know because you're using the other plug in the older Elgato, which is round, and it says AV video on it. Um, so really, just use HDMI unless you know otherwise. And what in the flippity floop is analog audio, Larry? Well, depending on the device or depending on your setup at home, you can set it up with the newer Elgato to plug in a separate audio cable that you can record audio separately via this little button here that records analog audio. Do note that if you record um, with analog audio and you're not actually using that extra audio plug, it's going to mute your HDMI cable and you're not gonna get any sound from things like a PC or from a newer console. So don't click that unless you know you're using analog audio plugged in separately to the Elgato. And uh, that's about it for these main little um, input devices. Now, the other thing that can be a little bit complicated to understand is what is HDMI color range? Well, the standard HDMI color range is the thing set up on all computers and like other consoles and stuff by default. This is the crunched down 235 colors, typically um, color space used by a lot of different devices. And if you don't know that your device is outputting expanded HDMI color range, then keep your settings on standard. Now, what does standard mean? Well, if, you, if you're using something that doesn't typically support standard, it's going to crunch down the colors so things don't look quite as vibrant or there's not quite as many different shades of color. Like, I just set it to standard and you'll notice things in the background here just now went from a really nice dark color to this and let me bunch this back up to live. Um, they went from being this, see this dark gray? Now it's gonna change color in a second. Let's wait, wait for it to happen. So basically it's just gonna change the color range. You, the higher the color range, the better, basically. So if you can set your graphics card on your computer to um, display expanded, which I have done for my Nvidia card, or you can also do this on consoles like PS4, and Xbox One. I'm not sure about the older consoles. It's good to use expanded because the colors just look better. And it's uh, having a little freak out moment as it's changing the color review. So the expanded makes it look nice and gray. You've got all these different vibrant colors. And if you change it to standard, it will no longer look correct anymore. And it'll actually be a bit darker. Everything will look darker. It'll be harder to see. The text won't be quite as um, sharp in some cases. So it's almost... <coughs> oh, excuse me. I have a little bit of a dry throat. It's better to use expanded when you know that that's what your computer is exporting. But if you look between the two screens and they don't look correct, 
then just change it so that it fits better. But for the, for the sake of example, we'll just leave it at standard. And then down here, these are just your standard quality presets. This is 1080p, 720. Um, then there's 480p and 360p. I don't know why you'd want to turn the quality down unless you just don't have the upload to handle higher, bigger, fancier videos. But I would just leave that to 1080p. And make sure you toggle on the 60 FPS so you can record that sweet, delicious 60 frames per second. Now, Larry, why on earth would I want to disable 60 frames per second? Well, depending on what you're re recording, some phones are slower, for example. If you're not getting 60 frames per second with whatever you're currently recording, then you're not going to be able to get that in the recorded video made by the Elgato either. All this does is allow Elgato to capture up to 60, but it'll record less than that. It'll record down to like 10 if you have a really choppy, slow computer or mobile device that you're trying to record from. So if it looks like you're stuttering and not getting 60 frames per second, don't record it because it'll look poopy when you put it on YouTube. Dial it back to 30, but otherwise you're good to leave it at 60. Quality. Well, the quality settings here are the middle better quality in the center here is about 25.3 megabits per second, and it maxes out at around, what is this, 40-ish? Uh, yeah, 40 megabits per second. Now, my maximum recommendation is to put it between better and best. That's about 35 megabits per second, 32. And that's about the most quality you're going to get out of most devices before you edit it on your computer and upload it to the web. And it's going to get super compressed anyway, and you're just wasting more space beyond this. My personal preference is either better or between better and this little tick halfway between better and good. And that's about 20-ish megabits per second, and that's more than enough for the vast majority of people's recording purposes. But we're going to put it on better today. And that's your primary settings for your capture card. These other things here are, if for some reason, whatever information you're getting from your capture card looks a little bit off color-wise, you can adjust it here with brightness, contrast, saturation, or hue. And you might even want to bump up the brightness and say, like, a really dark horror game. That's really hard to see. But otherwise, leave these blank and the same. Don't mess with these if you don't need to. Same with the audio. If the analog audio gain, when you're recording analog audio here, sounds really low when you're previewing it in the rest of the panels off to the side here that I'll show you in a second, you can boost it with this audio panel. This is for... Uh, analog audio only, as it says analog audio gain right here on the side. Profiles. If you want to quickly swap between a couple different devices, like a, a games console and a mobile device, you can quickly save out different settings profiles here, so you can hot swap between them. My settings tend to stay the same, or I can crop them later, so I don't tend to worry about this all that much. And then the last thing, advanced. If your TV, for whatever reason, when you plug in the Elgato, keeps turning off or fading to black or whatever, but it normally works just fine, this setting can let you boost the signal going to your TV, trying to keep it from doing that. And as you try it, um, just bump it up a notch by one at a time, try it again, see if it worked, and just bump it up until you reach the max. And if you reach the max and it's still having that problem, be sure to check out Elgato support. Um, something might be up with your card, or you just might need to use a different television or monitor for your recording. I mean, it happens. I've never run into this problem, and I've never run into anybody else who uses one of these that has, but it's just a good idea to tell you how that works. So that's it for these capture settings. Let me put back my settings, and uh, we'll be good to go. So yeah, that's the primary settings for controlling the quality control of your Elgato. So what's next? Well, if we, what do I have on my desktop? I don't really have a video to show you, but I can toggle my sound for you guys so that you can kind of hear or see in this little waveform some of the audio. So this little toggle here controls the in-game audio and it's usually set to about uh, zero decibels. It's not increasing or decreasing the audio coming into your Elgato capture card. If you're recording or you're streaming and you find the in-game audio is way too loud, 
you can manually dial it back right here, and you can listen to a preview by unclicking the mute button right here next to this time signature. So now that I've unmuted that, you can now hear me toggle the sound thingamabob on my laptop. You hear that? You can kind of hear it. It's not super loud. You may boost that a whole bunch and you can kind of hear it a little better. Don't mute yourself, you spicy devil. Wow, that was actually kind of loud, but yeah. So you can preview your sound here and you can actually hear all the levels ahead of time before you start recording or streaming, so you make sure that they are properly balanced. Um, you can even enable your microphone and you can hear that playback a little bit. Hello, everyone! Oh, wait, I forgot to unmute it. Wait, I forgot to unmute it. Oh, there you go. See? Oh, there you go. See? Isn't that fancy? It's pretty simple and straightforward. And, uh, I mean, I like it. It's all right there in front of you. For your streaming pleasures, if that's something that you're into, Elgato supports Twitch, YouTube, Ustream, and manual inputs for different streaming services, and it's all controlled right here through this panel. You can change the server it goes to, what settings you use, the category that it belongs in, the quality, the frame rate, and you can even click this button here, which allows you to automatically save all of your live streams as a recording locally, and why wouldn't you want to do that? You want to put all those delicious videos up on the YouTubes, right? So basically, just select the service that you want, and then input your account here. Like if I go to Twitch, it'll ask me for my username and password, and then I'll be able to log in through the system. But if you don't see your desired service here, like if you use Hitbox, you can just use this RTMP service, and this is basically just a manual server login for any s server that can handle a video stream that exists out there in the digital wilderness, and you just put in your account name, the URL to their streaming server, the stream key, and you're good to go. I mean, I think most people are probably still using Twitch or YouTube, but you know, if not, you have a custom solution right there. You just select the account you want to stream from, add in your credentials here, and then select your bitrate, and you should be good to go. Now, I should mention, if you're streaming to Twitch, you should not go over 5.5 megabits per second, because Twitch considers anything around 6 megabits per second or higher an abuse of their system, and they could ban you for doing that. They recommend on their side using about 3.5 megabits per second, but the official stance is they won't get mad at you so long as you keep it under 6. So following that, you have the ability to control your live commentary, which basically means your microphone, the delicious microphone that you hear Larry talking to you with right now. Um, I'm currently using a, a Blue Yeti, but it's, it can basically detect anything plugged into your computer. And then once you've got it selected, you can boost or lower your microphone as needed. Um, and if you look at it, let me turn on mine while muting it. If you look at mine as it's sitting right here, I'm kind of jumping into the red a little bit, and I would actually want to dial it back to around minus eight, six to eight decibels, so that when I talk to you guys and gals, it doesn't dip too far into the red very often. Now, I can also um, enable this thing that says automatically reduce game sounds, and this will automatically reduce game sounds whenever my voice is saying words on the other audio track. So that means that, like, the game will automatically get muted if I'm trying to say something super important, so it doesn't get drowned out by, like, the sounds of gunfires or explosions. And you can control those settings in here. You can set a threshold for your voice so that the microphone will not turn on unless it reaches a certain decibel level, and I can even turn that way the heck up. And it will not hear your voice unless it goes over a certain level so that it doesn't hear your breathing or you going, or any weird noises that you don't want it to hear. And then attenuation controls this automatic game reduction. Attenuation basically just means it's reducing the in-game sounds as you talk. That's just what this means. I personally don't use those. Again, I edit my stuff in an external editor, like the Adobe Audition thing back here in the background. So that's not super important to me. So I'm actually going to dial this back to zero. And then, last but not least in these little list of things here, is the tag section. This is where you label your video, so that when you open it up inside of your file browser, you can find it 
later, but my file browser is not currently open. Um, so if we open up this file again, back here in the back, you can find it because it's properly labeled. And you can also add the game type if you want, um, so that you can find it inside your editor, filtered by game type. You can add a description and some tags. And these descriptions and tags will be added automatically to your data when you try to use the export tool in the edit suite to upload it directly to YouTube. Personally, I only need the video title, but it never hurts to have some of this stuff filled out just to help you find stuff later if you let a lot of your videos just kind of sit in the background before you edit or upload them or turn them into highlight clips. Helps you not lose track of stuff. It's really handy dandy. So last but not least, let's talk about stream command. These little boxes down here are separate recording scenes that hook into Elgato that control your streaming overlay or your recording overlay if you so choose to use it for that. And these allow you to add things like different floating um, logos or decals, like currently I've got my Chupacabra Man if it wants to let me edit that, which apparently it doesn't really. It's having an opinion today, but I can change the picture around if I so choose. Um, I've got my little Chupacabra logo, and I can make it bigger or smaller by grabbing these corners. I can make it super big or super small, so it's just like a little transparent overlay so people can't just steal my video because it's got a watermark in the, co in the corner. Or, if I don't want that, I can select my webcam from my um, HD webcam. Hello, everyone. That's kind of up in the corner a little bit. I got this thing on a GoPro stand. How are you guys today? I'm feeling kind of relaxed. And it's a little bit delayed because it's synchronizing the footage with the footage coming out of your capture card, and it takes your capture card a, a moment or two in order to process stuff, so it's gonna delay the footage so that it properly synchronizes with what's being recorded, which is really nice. So you can add, you know, a webcam, you can add a logo, whatever you really feel like, and this will even use my built-in video, um, webcam in my computer if I really so choose. So that's basically how that stuff works. So once all this stuff is ready to go, you can start a recording by simply doing, well, I'm gonna name this like recording test, because it's always good to test these things before you wanna make a recording. I'm gonna minimize the stream command because I'm not using it presently. And to record, all you gotta do is make sure your commentary button is lit up so they can hear your beautiful voices and then you hit the capture button, or if you're not doing video recordings locally, you hit the streaming button instead, and the capture button will light up if you have it set up to archive the stream as you're recording. I would test this for you live, but I can't because I don't have a very fast upload speed, so it really won't connect properly. But when you do click this, this button will turn green, it'll have a little buffering animation for a little bit, and then after that is over, it'll finally be live on the web. Now, if you're not getting a stable stream or it's sputtering and stuttering and duttering, then turn your quality back on this little wheel and just kind of turn it back in increments until everything sort of evens out and st things stop getting all kind of spoopily and stuttery. And if you are streaming, you can just hot swap between different recording scenes by just clicking on these different buttons and it'll swap them around live, so you can do things like switch to a screen to do giveaways, switch to like a, a, a BRB screen if you gotta go take a tinkle, whatever you need to do, it's enabled. But I don't use the stream command, so I'm gonna disable that for the moment. And if you do see these weird black bars, don't freak out, that's just empty space inside the preview window most of the time. So I think that about covers it for how to set up and use the Elgato Game Capture HD software. I'll do a slightly tweaked video of this showing you the differences in the PC version, and I hope this has helped you guys and gals get started on recording your very own Elgato gameplay. If you have any questions or you're running into any hiccups, I've had this thing for a while. I've pretty much run into every issue under the sun. No Adobe, I, well, I guess you can update whatever the heck you want. Um, I can help you figure out the issues of whatever under the sun, because if there's a problem, 
regarding Elgato, I've probably run into it by now because I've used this to record flippin' everything. So until next time, I've been your host, Larry the Chupacabra. Don't forget to like and subscribe, especially if this helped you. And if it didn't help you and you're kind of miffed off that I, uh, well, didn't talk about this one thing or the fact that I put the editor in a different video, feel free to hit the dislike button and let me know why. It helps me make better video tutorials for you guys and gals at home. So until next time, I've been your host, Larry. Maybe check out my gaming channel and I'll catch you guys and gals next time. Toodles, everybody.